Hello there folks, today we're taking a look at the game called Nine Worlds. It's published by Medusa Games and the designer is Richard Denning. You saw the game as one of the lords of the nine of these nine worlds of Norse mythology. And you try to keep control of this world and maybe gain control of any other worlds. So let's go straight to the battlefield. So Nine Worlds is played over the course of three, six or nine rounds, depending on whether you like the training game, normal game or long game. It's an area control game where you want to score the most points, then you win the game. And let me show you how the game works. First of all, I'm going to show you that here, each player will have his avatar in his color and one of his troops, his stones, on the world which matches his uh, player color. And this is sort of a setup for two players, um, but you can play up to six eventually. You have some of your troops here in the reserve. Uh, which, like green and red player have it right there and here you have these nine worlds they are all colored and they have numbers from one to nine and it will be relevant in the world powers phase now how the game works we have different phases in each round as you can see the turn sequence we have the player order phase where we just uh, see whoever has the most stones on the board his troops will be the first and then the second and the third player, so it's a player order phase. Then action points phase, where we see if somebody will have less action points than normal. In a two-player game, it's always eight action points, but with more players, you can lose some action points by, for example, losing control of your home world. So this is two here. Now, the action phase. This is the main phase. In the action phase, you will spend these action points that are under here in order to do various actions. I put right here. And these various actions are written right here. And these are right, rather simple. You can move one stone from reserve to a player card, or you can move your stone between adjacent worlds, or you can move a stone to where your avatar is present, or you can banish another player's stone into the Helheim, where he will get the negative points at the scoring phase, and so on. And so these are all the different actions. You will, on your turn, you will spend them all, or as how many you want them and it's really easy for example I want to get um, three stones onto my player card because the stones that are in my reserve are not used yet they are not like in the game so let's say I'm gonna spend one two three points action points to get my stones up here and then for example I'm gonna spend another one two three points to get all those three points where's my avatar because each such action costs one point so for example, like that. And then the other player will do his turn. And basically, then you will go to the next phase. And this is the battles and world powers phase. So, let's do the situation. Now, let's say the situation is like that right here. So, we have three stones of green, four stones of red. Every world which has more than five stones in total in it will have a battle occurring. And the battle is really cool here. It's basically you are going to remove stones one by one in a player order until there are exactly five stones left. So the first player is green on the player order there and the second player is red, which means we remove one green then it's red's turn, he removes one. Which now means there are five stones in the world's we end the battle. As you can see, the red retains or holds the, uh, the position here, the control here. Also, as red won the battle, one of his stones, and only one, can go to Valhalla. It's up there, just basically you can put it on the side. He will score extra points uh, for getting the troops from Valhalla back into his reserve. So that's how it works. And then, after all the battles secure, we see who has the um, control in those worlds and which worlds have also five uh, stones in them. So, for example, this world has five stones and I have the control, so I will get to use this world's power in the world's power phase. In this case, for example, each one of us has two stones I still gain the control because I have my avatar here. So avatar is for breaking ties. 
in that situation nobody will get the world's power so that's how it is but let's say i got this world's power and maybe the green pearl got the first world's power second i got the fifth eighth whatever it's further into the game and these are all the different world's power written right here and you're gonna use them from the first world to the ninth world in numerical order and the world powers are like that for example the first world the uh, what's called Asgard yes may neither be affected by nor use any world powers this turn so here is return one stone from Helheim to any world world sorry or move two stones from reserve to player card or let's say this is the fifth world which is called Midgard exchange one of your own stones with any other stone or let's say this is destroy the seventh uh, which is uh, how it's called Muspelheim return one stone to the owning place reserve or two to their cards so some powers are really cool they're about destroying some powers are cool in defending or adding uh, to the board so that's how everything occurs now later on we go to the fifth phase and it's Valhalla phase now all the troops that were in Valhalla victorious troops will be get back to the player's reserves and each player will get two points for each of his stones returning then we go to the scoring phase the scoring phase occurs only on the, after the third sixth and ninth round depending on how long you want the game to be let's say we're gonna play the normal game so it occurs after the third after the sixth round when we score points we we'll look at all the different stuff and it's also written right here we look for uh, one point for each stone on your player card so that's cool you get one point for each uh, what is called for each world you have a stone on okay i'm i'm present in many worlds i'll get extra points you get extra points for each stone that you have in this nine worlds you get points if you dispute uh, the control of the world so like that for example and you get points more points if you control this world exactly for each world that you can control you get for example five points and you get negative points for the Helheim if some troops are in Helheim and you go gonna go through those rounds spending action points then after the third and sixth round you're gonna score after the sixth round if it's a normal game the game will end and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game so you can also play either the base game where you don't have any special power of your uh, who is it is a god or it is so or you can pay with a special power for example this is the green special power Alfheim Freyr you may move any one stone from the world your avatar is into an adjacent world for each uh, for free each turn for example for example this is Andvari after each battles have occurred on a world when you determine control of a world for world power activation purposes only, your avatar counts both as an additional stone as well as retaining the tie, breaking power. Okay, cool. You can use avatar to get sort of to be as an additional stone. So usually the avatars are just for breaking ties and to spawn the stones into the places where avatars are on. For example, this is Muspelheim, Surtur. Once per turn for free, you can remove one stone from the world your avatar is on and return it to the owner's uh, player card. You can destroy the other stones. And, okay, there are more. Let's say here, uh, Hell. Once per turn, you may move another player's avatar to an adjacent world, providing it is in the same world or is in an adjacent world to your avatar. Okay, so basically these are all the different player powers there's nine of them as the worlds themselves and you can use this to boost the game and to make it more variable depending on the players when i looked at the box cover it wasn't that beautiful for me but it's stylish i sort of like how it looks and don't like i don't know it's i'm between the two uh, this artwork is is different it's stylish it uh, adds to the theme i think it adds to the game as a whole but not everybody will like this kind of artwork i don't like this artwork at all like at all but at all, all other components and overly the way it looks from the distance <laughs> i like but yeah, the artwork yeah. is really bad in my the opinion avatars the stones yep. 
they are really cool when they are on the board. And all there. the mix of those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I also like the side of the uh, sorry side of the box. Uh, each side has a legend about every world of this uh, Norse mythology. So, which is really cool. It adds to the theme, adds to the like historical thing there as well, mythological thing. So, I like that. I like some facts about things. So, um, did you read them? Yes, I read them all. Yeah, and there's That's a surprising. there is also like how are these uh, words pronounced? Like Yggdrasil, okay. it's like it. pronunciation, pronunciation, yeah. such. So, it's really cool. So, um, the rule book itself is fine. There should be some things that should be more clear. It's it's okay, yeah. You can write it better, but you can understand the game from that, and maybe ask some questions from uh, um, from BGG. Now, yeah. The game in its core is area control. Uh, that's basically it. So this mm -hmm. game has pretty much only mechanic, nothing mixed in, just area control. Pure one. Pure, pure area, area yeah, control. Yeah, with some variety in some con concrete d details, but I mean. Details really are different in different area control games are different. Yeah. Uh, in this game, interesting is although battle mechanic. Here, if you are the first in player order, so you have an advantage to choose first, to do the first moves, but you will be the first to lose your troops as well, or mm -hmm. units in, in there, which is interesting. So you always yeah. have to like keep that in mind, which yeah. was neat and actually quite unique, I think. Th that's a bit of maths when you have certain amount of tokens there and then you are looking at, all right, so he, he will be the first to remove the token, he'll be the second, all right, and then there will mm -hmm. be exactly five. Oh, then I'll get the control of the world. So that's that's really cool. That That's what I like the most, I think, about this. Yep. Uh, what I also like are the world powers. So you get the world powers if you have five stones on the world. And that's uh, really cool, in my opinion, because those uh, world powers, they are, sp you, you can feel them as special abilities, and they um, change the battlefield drastically, in my opinion, at some point. Quite a lot. Yeah. But still, yeah. I, li I like the world powers here as well. So in the a game you get them. eight uh, action points, and you have actually quite a, like a, quite a big variety of mm -hmm. actions you can do. But throughout the game, you're gonna mainly use two to three different. So yeah, you kind of have all the variety, but it's not likely you're gonna use that. So mm, yeah, on the other hand, like if it's a pure area control game, um, there's not much you can basically do. But I like the variety. Like sometimes you have to do something with your avatar, some something with your stone, and you can do something to the other player's stones that I like, and some let's say, more nasty uh, actions These are pretty are, expensive. Are more expensive, yeah. And yeah, oh, they, they feel like really pretty like expensive. Do. Yeah, like banish one stone from another player to the Helheim, it, mm -hmm. it's three action points. It's basically one third of your action points, mm -hmm. so... Even more. Yeah, it depends. If you play with uh, more players, there are less action points. Seven, six, okay, depends, yeah. That, yeah. So, um, there's a problem for me uh, in this game, that's the basically catch-up mechanic or no catch-up mechanic in this game. <laughs> uh, the thing is that if you are behind, if you have few stones on the board, everyone else has a lot of them because you didn't have a good start, it's really hard to come back. If it's with more players, basically it's a tactical game, so you will uh, go into each other's throat and you cannot, like basically you cannot do much to get back into the game. I was that in the first game, I was, I was pretty much like that, so... It didn't go well for me at the start, and it was really hard to, to get back into the game. I got back, I got a few more points in, in future scoring phases, but eventually it didn't help me that much. Yeah, Yeah, I agree a little bit on, on this one, and especially like we noticed that in the very beginning, if someone gets a control over the world with all five stones, then it's not easy at all to get to mm -hmm. like do anything at all in this world later on in the game. It's like yeah. really hard and super expensive. Yeah. So Also, yeah, if you banish few like, stones from his place, then he just retrieves them. Yeah, and it's like it, super easy to do that. So yeah, it was kind of, if you claim the place in the beginning, it's probably going to get it until, until the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, as I already told, this game is rather tactical than strategical for me. Mm -hmm. uh, at least with more players. I think uh, we played the two-player variant as well, so it was more strategy. 
Um, but overall it's a tactical game. You need to adapt uh, to other players a lot and to what the situation, what are the world powers and such. So it's all about just adapting, adapting, adapting to the situation. And so. it's gonna change a lot. So yeah, I yeah. agree. Not much strategy, mostly tactic. Mm -hmm. So it was mentioned before, uh, if you are the first, you get the first one to choose uh, what actions you want to do. So it gives you more choices. But actually in this game, quite often being second or last is more important and more gives you more opportunity, more choices to see what everybody did mm -hmm. and then yeah. you play your turn. I really like to be last, but uh, being last means that you have the fewest uh, stones out there. So it's not... That good, on the other hand, it's good. So you have that kind of balance there, at least. Uh, I remember I was like once, like already relieved that, oh, finally, I'm not the first one, yeah. which is interesting. So you can see what other players will do. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and as I told you already, uh, I think that, or maybe I didn't tell you, but more players is better for this game. Of course, it's an area control game. It plays from two to six. Two is a variant. Which uh, I was, think, meh. yeah. It kind of I mean, like, was like, meh. I'm not sure about, we haven't played the six players, so I'm not sure about the six players, the, 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 but I think the more players, the, the merrier, the better, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it's an area control, it's very, it's very tactical, you need to adapt, there will be back and forth all the time anyway, so. And it shouldn't add too much downtime, because mm -hmm. uh, turns are rather quick, yes, you sometimes need to like calculate, but it's not that much, so I don't think it would add, especially if you're actually paying attention most of the times what other what other players are doing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, should be. Um, yeah, overall, I cannot really come up with uh, with the wording for whether I like the game or not. I like some aspects of the game, but I think this game is just not for me. Um, I would definitely compare it to, for example, we had the game Nexus Ops, which is just pure area control, just bashing each other and trying to, of course, get the most points here as well. Most points, the arrow mechanic, but eventually it's all about like controlling the areas. But what I liked about Nexus Ops was that the troops uh, were uh, with different special powers. And then were there cards, is, there were more stuff. Yeah, there. There, there is not such thing here about this kind of a... Uh, maybe if there would be... Like, stones are cool, they look cool, but maybe if instead of stones there would be some troops... Now we're talking about Blood no. Age, probably. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it, I'm just speculating. Well, the game is not bad. Definitely yeah. not. Just but for me, it's way too... First of all, it's way too pure area control, which is yeah. not our type. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean it's bad, it's just not our type. Yeah. But the second thing which is about the game is like, it doesn't have much into it. Yeah. I would want, from this game, I would want to have more, a mm -hmm. little bit more. It's way too strip. It's a way to just one single mechanic. Yeah. I want more. It's, it's basically... To enjoy, it's, I, yeah. to just to enjoy anymore. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good game, but it doesn't stand out of the, mm -hmm. of the, whole, of the crowd. Yeah, of any other, like so yeah. many other area control games. But it's, not, yeah. but it's not as, as complicated as it may seem at first. And I think uh, quite a few folks might enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an easier area air control game, I would say. So it might be good for learning area control as well. Yeah. Might be. So So let's say for me, like just my last words, it's not a bad game, but it just did not create any single positive emotion. Mm -hmm. Not a bad either. But it's like it was so whatever that Yeah. For it me. Became boring, sadly. So but anyway, check out this game. Uh, it can be for you yes. at least. So, if you like area controls. Yes. Thanks for watching. We see you another time in another review or any other video. Bye bye.